As you probably have gathered from the title, we're going to be talking about the Flow X16 today. It's the newly like teased laptop by Asus. They're going to be announcing it on the 17th in their little keynote thing that they're doing. Uh, this is the laptop right here. This is a leaked Asus spec sheet that was posted to like some sort of European store. I'm not entirely sure which one. We've got power, HDMI, USB-C, two Type A's, got a micro SD port and the power button. And we have vents here and here. So that's just a general overview of what we're going to expect for the device to look like. It's going to look like this. I don't know if this is metal or not. Um, this spec sheet doesn't really go into detail on that. I'm hoping it is metallic um, just to give a nice little, have a nice little premium flow model. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see if they do that. So, like, that's not the interesting thing here. Uh, we do have a, just a nice spec run down here. So we'll, we'll go over that right now. So, you know, this thing is... 35.5 by 24.3 by 1.94 centimeters. Yeah, so the G15 is this blue one here, and we'll just cut all these other out, and you can see that one is 20 millimeters. Yeah, so this is just slightly thinner than Notebook Chick's measurement of the G15. So it should be around that size in terms of thickness and just overall sizing. Like you can see, we've got these speaker grills and everything. The keyboard looks like that. And if we take a look here, you know, you can see, oh, we got the grill and the keyboards right there. You can see the little key and the keyboard starting. Should be roughly the same size as the G15, um, just with a very different hinge design. Because uh, naturally, the G15 has that little ergo lift business going on. You know, <laughs> the screen goes underneath the body. And this is actually like a two-in-one that hinges back like this. 2.1 kilograms versus G15. We can take a look at that real quick just to get an idea of how heavy that is. This is two kilograms per notebook check. So likely a little heavier. It's worth note this has glass because it's a touch screen and the G14 does not. It's just this plastic bezel. Glass adds a lot of weight to a computer. Um, a lot of the time it can add like a pound of weight. So considering that this is only a little heavier than the G15 uh, is pretty impressive. So yeah, uh, general specs, we have the 6900HS, which you would expect in a, you know, thin performance machine. Probably not HX, so it'd just be HS. And Asus generally goes with HS anyway. Not that it really matters. We have MUX switch as usual with all the Asus machines and Optimus. Uh, we have 3070 Ti, which runs at 80 watt plus 25 watt or 100 watt plus 25 watt in turbo. That's what this means. PPAV is that uh, if the CPU is not in much use, it'll boost up higher to 125. Otherwise, it'll stick around 100 in turbo or 80 in non-turbo. Uh, mode 2 is turbo, basically. Got 8 gigabytes of VRAM, of course. The integrated graphics on this APU is a 680M. So we got that RDNA 2 business going on with the 6000 series, of course. And it's a 16-inch laptop at 1600p. We got 665 hertz screen at 3 milliseconds. So that really doesn't, 3 milliseconds does not not really mean anything. 3 milliseconds is pretty useless. Uh, we'll see in testing if it's actually any good. Um, but 3 can mean anything from like smeary mess to pretty good. So we'll see. Uh, does have touch, obviously. Uh, it's a 2-in-1. And it does actually have pen support. Um, but spoiler here, mini LED screen at 1100 nits. Uh, worth mentioning that this 1100 number might just be an HDR because uh, the MacBooks uh, are like that and whatnot. Like they'll say it's 1100 nits, but it actually only goes up to like 300, 400 unless you're an HDR or something like that. But this might be different because it's a Windows machine. We'll see. We haven't seen mini LED really in any Windows computers that I'm aware of, or at least any like good implementations of it. So this might be pretty good, might not. Given how thick the screen is, um, I would say it's likely <laughs> going to be pretty good because if we take a look here, you know, this is a thick, 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 thick screen, especially for a two in one. Um, so chances are it should be pretty good but you know should be pretty color accurate we got that p from dci p3 100 or at least good coverage um but it does say it's pantone va validated so it might just be a pretty good screen in general might be good for artist use which is always nice to see does come with FreeSync premium pro uh, i imagine that's when you're not in gpu only mode that that's available not sure if g-sync will be capable in the internal monitor and probably won't be um but at least you have that option when you're in optimus mode got this little marketing blah dolby vision hdr support there's the stylus support and you can see we have soda memory 
DDR5 Sodim. Uh, two of those. We also have two slots for M.2 SSDs, which is definitely great to see. Sodim memory is kind of <laughs> at a premium nowadays. Um, to, so just to have it in this machine that's already as exciting as this. You'll see why I'm so excited for this thing soon when we start looking at a uh, little Asus video here. Um, but like, that's really nice. Uh, we also have, you know, Wi-Fi 6Z, whatever. It's probably real tech out of the box, but you can switch it to Intel, you know. Uh, we have the XG mobile interface, which if you're not familiar, so the XG port, like on the X13 and Z13, is a USB-C port and then a little semi-proprietary uh, PCIe interface cable combined together. So you can technically use the XG Mobile's USB-C port for like charging and like data, uh, but it's not intended for use like that solo. So it's possible you might damage the port if like you move it wrong or something. It might not be as enforced as it would otherwise be. But you know, that does add up to three USB C ports that have varying levels of functionality. You can see one of those has G-Sync support, one of them doesn't, but there's still 3.2 Gen 2 all the way. You have two Type A ports, as I mentioned, that are 3.2 Gen 2, and we have that UHS-2 SD card reader. HDMI 2.1 port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Always appreciated to still see that. Uh, we have a IR camera for Windows Hello. I don't think there's a fingerprint reader, so this is probably the preferred way to sign in uh, with biometrics. And we got that backlit RGB be keyboard and then there we go 90 watt hour battery and a 240 watt brick no idea if this supports USB-C power I imagine it probably does given it supports the XG mobile um, but you know we'll see very likely it does though France gave it a pretty good repairability score so that's that's always nice but yeah so let's take a look at this video because there's a lot in here that they uh, you can see learn about the censored part on May 17th um, they didn't do a very good job <laughs> uh, you'll see what so you can see here. Oh, there's nothing censored. I wonder what the censored thing is we got this back plate. Oh look that's censored. I wonder what that was. Let's go back. Oh, there's a fan there Hmm, I wonder I wonder what's censored <laughs> so We can also see this vent here and this will make sense in about a moment oh, We'll let Neo take his jacket off Censored fan again there's the two other fans that go there and there. Putting the big old battery in. Worth note, by the way, we'll just go back for a minute. You can see that the Wi-Fi card is actually socketed. So if you do want to replace that with Intel, as I mentioned previously, you can do that. That's one of the nice things with the AMD systems is pretty much no one solders a Wi-Fi card in for them. Um, but yeah, you'll have to, of course, investigate that after launch and see if it stays like this. I'm sure it probably will. You can also see there's the XG mobile port um, and everything else that was part of this spec leak. Um, so it does look like it's pretty legit. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll watch this first. You can see, oh, look at this ventilation. And they put the SSD in, oh, it's, it's socketed. Oh, and there's socketed memory like in the spec leak. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's a fan. Too bad we couldn't see that just a moment ago right here. Anyway. Oh yeah, and we can see it again when they're putting the memory in. They really just didn't censor this very well, did they? Oh look, a fan! Why is that there? Hmm... I don't know what they're doing there. Oh yeah, and then they just showed the whole thing. Huh, I wonder what that is. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about this a little bit. You can see, you know, obviously at the end they're like, Oh look, it's two in one. Ooh, guys, it can play a video. <laughs> um, but let's let's talk. So you can see near the end here, they go over this, and you can see the cooler. Now this cooler is different than a lot of different a lot of other systems, and I'll even just show you that here. Let's pull up another. But yeah, so you can see a lot of systems are like this, where they have you know a fan here, fan here, blows through these vents, and then there's nothing back here except maybe ports or just nothing. A lot of the times there's literally just nothing there. Um, it's just extra motherboard space that they can use for like power components or, you know, whatever else. Um, but you can see here, and this is very interesting, is that um, on the G15, there's only one uh, sort of memory slot. Now, I'm not exactly sure why <laughs> this is different than G15. I guess, you know, the 16 inch screen maybe allows for like a little more vertical space, but it is funny that the lower performance in theory system has more soda memory slots. Of course, that's probably just, there's less heat pipes going on. Like if we look here, you know, this cooler is pretty consolidated near the top and this one is like all over the board. So it's likely that that eats up a bit of space, but that's just a little fun fact I thought. You know, you can see that uh, we have 
three pipes, three pipes, and then we have this extra pipe that just goes to cool like VRMs and stuff, and then this one that helps the CPU, and this one helps the GPU. That's how the G15 set up to just help it, you know, cool a lot better than it otherwise would. And then we have this one where you can see we've got one, two, three pipes there, and then there's a pipe that comes around here, and it goes this way, and it covers both of those components. So we have CPU and GPU all looped into this little bit of cooler here, which is interesting. This heat could also spread through the fins to this side, and this could spread over that way, because it is just kind of one piece of copper, and the radiators do like to kind of you know, evenly be a temperature to some extent. And the heat will just kind of spread through it. Um, that's just kind of how radiators are. Let's try to get a nicer look at that cooler, just from up top. See if we can get one. We can at least see here, you know, we have those four pipes. One of those goes out to the side, um, and it covers both CPU and GPU. So we have side ventilation being used on this side to cool both components. And now we have this section here, and that's what this fan is for. This fan sits here, and it blows air out, like to here, and then like that. So this whole area gets air blown across it. So we've got all these heat pipes um, that, you know, while this fan is working, it's little magic over here, blowing across this whole area of the computer, blows out through this ventilation at the rear, and just assists the rest of the cooler in cooling the computer down, uh, of course, with only one pipe, but nevertheless, it is helping. You know, this is likely to keep this portion of the bottom plate cooler than it otherwise would be. And the reason why I mentioned that is if we take a look at notebook checks, uh, thermal shots, you can see that most conventional computers, they get very hot in this section because that's where the cooler is, obviously. Or maybe not obviously if you're not familiar with the, uh, how this works, but when you don't have airflow, uh, the heat will just kind of like permeate into the air inside of the computer that's kind of trapped and it heats up this bottom section and if it's a metal section it gets very warm and you can really feel it this is a problem with a lot of systems so it's interesting to see that you know asus is just putting a fan in the middle of the motherboard to blow across this to maybe even just help address this problem assist the cooling not sure I imagine with the laptop, as slim as they're trying to go with it, uh, it, may, it might make sense to do that. And, you know, we can actually see that the computer is considerably slimmer than it might otherwise be. If we get through the video here, there's a little portion where they show at least the screen. Yeah, you can see this actual, like, working portion of the device is pretty thin. The screen takes up a lot of the thickness here. I think that's kind of like that on the G15 anyway, but I think it's worth just mentioning. No, it's not. Okay, so you can see like here, this is how thin that portion of the device is on the G15. Like, it's a very thin lid. It's just the LCD. But when we have you know, mini LED, and it's a two-in-one, so it needs to be reinforced to support the weight of the device and whatnot. It's like, this is like, it's like twice as thick as this, if not like maybe around three times. So we have way less room in here. And you, you know, you can see that if we take a look at this, just in the marketing photo, you know, the device is not really that much thicker than like a type A port. Um, there is some portions of it that are thicker. Like it does look like it slopes out to just try and accommodate the space inside. But like, it's really just not that thick if you don't include the screen, of course. So I think this is cool. Uh, we don't see this like ever. Um, in terms of like the coolers being designed to operate like this. It will be interesting to see if uh, there is any sort of like, you know, chassis temperature benefit from doing this. I guarantee there will be to some extent, uh, just improving the, like reducing the amount of heat radiating from these pipes pushing into the bottom plate. I'm assuming, you know, that smaller fan doesn't get covered by like a leg or something. Um, but you know, we'll see. I think there's a lot of potential to this thing. If the mini LED screen doesn't like completely demolish battery life, this could be a pretty awesome system, especially given that we have this much GPU power at our disposal. You know, should be designed roughly for 35 to 45 watts on the CPU, hopefully, and probably around, you know, 100 watts on the GPU sustained both of those. So that's a pretty competent gaming machine. Uh, just for a two-in-one. Like, we haven't seen a two-in-one with that kind of power before. You know, that's kind of what the X13 did. It was like, oh, look how much power we can put in a 13-inch machine. Look how powerful this thing is. Isn't that crazy? And everyone's like, yeah, but it's got, like, you know, it's kind of plasticky. So if they can make, like, a really premium machine out of this, 
I'll be impressed. And I'll probably buy one. I'll probably review it even. Like, you know, it's been six months. I said looking forward to review this, reviewing this thing. I really hope this comes out soon. I hope it releases soon. I will buy one if it's available and not like four grand. Don't buy stuff before reviews come out unless you're like okay with returning it and you don't need anything right now. Uh, Cause it's a gamble. Stuff can show up and be total garbage. And Asus has kind of a history of launch day machines just being broken and busted and horrible. Um, so if you buy launch day, be prepared to return it, be prepared for problems, be prepared to wait for your placement device. But I'm definitely excited for it. I like two sodium. The whole thing is upgradable. It's gonna probably replace what I got my P15 for originally. So that's at least nice. It's possible that other creators might have content out pretty soon on the thing. You know, just a little hint. So I would watch out for that and see if anything interesting comes out. Um, but for now, that's it. If you found this helpful or you're looking forward to review this system, be sure to get subscribed. I will, you know, of course, not review something if I'm not confident in it in the first place. Uh, so if something comes out during like the 17th presentation or whatever that makes me doubt if the thing is not any good, I will just not review it. If all goes well and it goes as I think it will, expect it, you know, soon after the release in the US. Hope this video was helpful. Be sure to get subscribed if you want to see the review and I'll see you guys later.